Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On the Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Hey, someone's in a big hurry. Wow, there goes Johnny. Seems like everyone's hurrying. That's right. Everyone's hurrying to their grocer. They're rushing to get their swell new miniature Quaker model farm right away. This complete model farm is made up of 46 detail scale models in all. And these models are yours at no extra cost. There's no waiting. 46 different models of farm buildings, animals, and equipment are yours without delay. There's nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Yes, there's no delay. Here's an offer of a lifetime, made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen for full details on how to get this complete new Quaker model farm. You'll hear it all in just a few minutes. When Bill Chandler's wife died, leaving him with a 12-year-old son, he joined the rush to the Yukon but not for gold. Arriving in Dawson, he sought out Sergeant Preston. Timmy and I are not looking for gold, are we, Timmy? No, sir. We're going to set up a sawmill and cut down trees. Oh. When I grow up to be a man, I'm going to get a dog just like yours and, and be a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what you've done, Sergeant. I plan to make a lumberjack out of him, and he takes one look at you and King, and all my plans go up in smoke. I think it was King, not I, who changed Timmy's mind. They seem to have stuck out quite a friendship. You bet we have. Haven't we, King? Oh, he's a swell dog. Have you found a location, Bill? That's what I came to see you about. My sawmills and crates at the dock now. But I have no location. And perhaps I can give you a tip. I just heard today that they've stuck the mother load at the pannings along Cedar Creek. Now a town will spring up there and it'll be permanent. They'll need lumber for houses, stores, and mines. Right. To date, no one's applied for timber rights, but they will when the news gets around. That's just what I'm looking for, Sergeant. A place that offers permanency and a fair return on my investment. Then you'd better act fast. Big Frank Knut's in town. Who's he? Speculator. He'd gamble on anything from a dog race to a timber tract. Right now, he's interested in timber. Then I'd better not let any grass grow under my feet. Just tell me where I go to file. Well, I'm going down the street, Come Bill. On. I'll show you the office. Come along, Timmy. We're walking with Sergeant Preston. One king. As Sergeant Preston had said, Big Frank Knut's current interest was in timber. But at the moment, even that interest had lagged as he sat at a table in the Placer Cafe, his eyes fixed on one of the girl dancers. A companion, Joe LaRue, tried unsuccessfully to get his attention. Won't you listen to what I'm telling you, Big Frank? Huh? Take your eyes off that girl. Listen to me. Okay, okay. What is it, Joe? They found the mother load up in Cedar Creek. Now, if you move fast, you can get the timber right. Hey, girly. Come here. Oh, thunder. What's the sense of trying to talk to you? <laughs> Come here. You calling me, Mr. Cruz? Sure. <laughs> sit down. Be sociable. Well, it's against the rules, Mr. Canute. We're not allowed to sit at the table with customers. Oh, oh, I make my own rules. Sit down. <laughs> this may cost you a fortune, Big Frank. Joe, if you don't shut up, I'll fire you. <laughs> Wish you'd listen to me. The news of the Cedar Creek strike gets out. Somebody will grab that timber. So long. I don't want to interrupt you, Mr. Canoe. Oh, don't pay any attention to Joe. He's always talking business. Now sit down like a nice little girl. Eh? I'm sorry I can't. Who says you can't? Mr. Foster, the manager. It's against the rules. Why, girthy. <laughs> I spend a thousand a week in this place. Sometimes that much in a night. Yes, I know you do. 
Now I say sit down. And I mean it. Get Come your on. hands off me. <laughs> A little wild cat, ain't you? Huh? I said let me go. Let her alone, Kenobi. Huh? I said let her alone. Thanks, Sergeant Preston. Ah, so it's you, huh, Preston? Why aren't you out catching crooks instead of buttoning into matters that don't concern you? You know the rules in here, Canute. One of the few places in town where a girl can work without being molested. Yeah? Well, maybe one of these days I'll change the rules. I doubt that. And if you don't stop making a nuisance of yourself, I'll run you in. Come on, King. Let's go. <laughs> okay, girlie. Looks like you win this time. But I'll deal the next hand... Just watch and see. I'm not afraid of your threats. Hey, Frank. Frank. Yeah. Oh, it's you, Joe. You're a fool if I ever knew one. What are you talking about? The fellas just grabbed them timber rights. Timber rights? What timber rights? The ones I was telling you about. Only you couldn't get your mind off that girl. Now, listen. They found the mother load of the paintings up Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek? Yeah, and they'll start a town there. If you'd have moved when I told you, you could have had the timber rights for the asking. Too late now. Joe, that girl cost me a fortune. That's what I try to tell you. You wouldn't listen. You didn't even hear me when I tried to talk to you. Well, looks like it's time I changed some of the rules around here. It was three months later that a dignified and smartly dressed girl, giving her name as Betty Owen, came to see Sergeant Preston. King greeted her warmly. Well, King seems to like you. And I like King. You uh, work here in Dawson? You don't remember me, Sergeant Preston? I'm the girl you befriended in the Placer Cafe a few weeks ago. Oh, now I know you. You're a dancer in the Placer. I was a dancer there. Big Frank Canute fired me a month ago. Fired you? Well, how could he fire you? He bought the Placer, and the first thing he did was to fire me. Oh, I hadn't heard about the sale. King and I just returned from Cedar Creek. I've been waiting to see you. About Big Frank Canute? Oh, no. It's about a job. I need one badly. You've tried the other dance halls, of course. No, Sergeant Preston, I haven't. You see, frankly, I'm not a professional. But, as you know, there are a few jobs open to women in the Yukon. Yes, that's true, unfortunately. That's why I took the job in the first place. Just to tide me over until I could get something else. Something I'd like. For instance? I was a school teacher in Montreal. I didn't think you fitted into the picture at the plaza. I haven't wasted my time. It's been interesting, and the pay was good. But if you know of some job that would be more suitable This for is a me, coincidence, I must say. How do you mean, Sergeant? Well, as I told you, King and I have been on patrol up in the Cedar Creek region. Yes. Quite a community is springing up there. Looks to be permanent. Families are moving in. Yes, I heard something about they it. They told me the one thing they need right now is a school teacher. Really? I'd be the happiest person in the world if I could have the job. Won't be exciting like Dawson and some of the other camps. That's just what I'd like to get away from. Excitement. I've had enough of it. And the job's as good as yours. Oh, good. There's a party of men and women leaving tomorrow for Cedar Creek. Families with children. Suppose you go along with them. I'll go at once and pack my trunk. Oh, uh, another thing. Yes? When you get to Cedar Creek, go see a young man named Bill Chandler. He's a friend of mine. Bill's in the lumber business, and he's sort of an um, unofficial mayor. It was he who asked me to find a teacher. You see, he has a young son, Timmy. Nice little... Soon after Betty Owen arrived at Cedar Creek, she began to realize that a new life had opened for her, the kind of life she had always dreamed of. As a teacher, she was accepted as an important member of the growing community. In the weeks that followed, Tim Chandler became one of her most devoted pupils. Then one day... There was an elfish grin on the boy's face when he pointed to a ring on her finger and said... I know who gave it to you. You do. My dad gave it to you. Would you like me to be your new mother, Timmy? Oh, you bet I would. Next to my dad, you're the best friend I ever had. <laughs> and next to your daddy, I think you're the best friend I ever had, Timmy. Oh, look, Miss Owen. Oh, look who's coming. Oh, why, it's Sergeant Preston and King. They're my friends, too. Here, King. Here, King. Hello, Timmy. Miss Owen. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hi there, King. This is a real <laughs> surprise, Sergeant. I'm so glad to see you. King and I are on patrol. Thought we'd stop by and see how you like your new job. Oh, it's wonderful. You'll never know what it's meant to me. Sergeant Preston. Yes, Timmy? See the ring my daddy gave to Miss Owen? Oh. Well, I'm glad, Miss Owen. Bill Chandler's one of the finest men I know. Naturally, I think so, Sergeant. <laughs> 
Uh, won't you come inside and let me serve tea? Why, yes, thanks. Sergeant Preston, may King go with me? Yes, Timmy. Where are you going? To tell Daddy you're here. He's up at the mill. Oh, Timmy, that's a long way from here. I don't think you should go alone. I won't be alone. Not if King goes with me. Well, I guess you're right, Timmy. You'll be safe enough with King. Is it all right, Sergeant? Yes, I think so. Go with Timmy, King. See he doesn't get into trouble. Come on, King. Come along with me, King. Oh, Timmy, tell your father I'm serving tea. Ask him to join us, will you? No, I'll bring him back, Miss Owen. Come on, King. Let's go inside, Sergeant. I have so much to tell you. And I'm anxious to hear it. Bill will be here soon, and I want to congratulate him. But Bill Chandler was not at the mill. At that very moment, he was listening to a business proposition in the new Cedar Creek Bank. Big Frank Canute did most of the talking, but there were side comments by Joe LaRue. Joe and me came up the river yesterday. Been looking over that stand of timber you're working, Chandler. We've seen a lot better, ain't we, Frank? Yes, and worse. I'll take it off your hands, Chandler. At a fair figure, too. It's not for sale, Canute. Oh, anything's for sale for a price. Name your own figure first. No, I'm not interested, sorry. Well, how about thinking it over for a couple of days? <laughs> Maybe you'll change your mind. Sure, that's right. Joe and me don't mind staying in town for a while. <laughs> Big Frank wants to renew acquaintance with a lady, eh? don't you, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind, Joe. She might like me a little better now. A lady? Do I know her? No, you might. I understand she lives in the log cottage up in the hill by the schoolhouse. Oh, Miss Owen. Yeah, that's her name. Uh, she's a school teacher. Go up. Oh, what? School teacher? <laughs> What's so amusing about that? Well, she ain't no school teacher. She's nothing but a cheap cabaret dancer from Dawson. <laughs> you? And I fired her. Hey, it's the idea of sucking Frank. Do you want the same? No, no, get away. Get to your feet, Canute. I'll get you for this, Chandler. I'll give you both just five minutes to hit the trail out of town. Uh, come on, big Frank. We don't want to get in any jam around here. Come on. I'll go. You haven't heard the last of me, Chandler. Get going. If you as much as speak to a soul before you're out of town, I'll put a bullet through you. Now get! We'll continue our story in just a moment. Listen. Here's how you can get the sensational new miniature Quaker model farm. And it's yours without waiting a single day. Listen. That's Bossy the Cow. You can stock your farm with model cows. And you can have your own model Shetland pony. <coughs> Say, you can get 46 detailed scale models in all for your farm. And they're yours at no extra cost. What fun! You build these exciting models yourself. Models like a big red barn with sliding door. Yes, you get a big red barn with sliding door. To say nothing of a windmill that turns. Man, oh man, these models are skillfully designed. Think of it. Doors and windows of buildings open and close. You get important farm equipment, too, like a tractor. You get everything. Farmhouse itself, a hired man's house, hen house, cattle shed, and even a roadside stand. What's more, all this doesn't cost you a single extra penny. Here's all you do to get these exciting models. Hurry to your grocer. Ask for special new packages of Quaker puffed rice... And Quaker puffed wheat. Yes, every model comes on new packages of the delicious breakfast cereals shot from guns. That's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. There are eight different packages in all. And you get as many as six different models on a single package. What's more, every package has at least two or more models of farm animals. And talk about fun. All models are easy to build. They're pre-cut and scored. No paste or glue is necessary. And models stand by themselves. They're a gold mine of fun, games, and excitement. Act fast. Be first to own a complete Quaker model farm. There's no waiting, nothing to send in, no money, box tops, or coupons. Remember, these models come only on new packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. And different models come on eight different packages. They're waiting for you right now on your grocer's shelf. Ask for Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Hurry, there's no delay. Start building your Quaker model farm right away. And now to continue our story. 
Betty Owen had just poured a cup of tea for Sergeant Preston when she looked through the window and exclaimed... Oh, here comes Bill now. Yes, but he's coming up the street from town. He couldn't have been at the mill. When Timmy finds he isn't there, he and King will come back here. I'll open the door. He'll be so surprised to see you, Sergeant. I have a surprise for you, Bill. Hello, Bill. Congratulations. Sergeant Preston. I didn't know you were here, but I'm glad you are. Why, Bill, is something wrong? Has anything happened? Shut the door. You're upset, Bill. What's the matter? Sergeant, did you know this girl before you sent her up here? Yes. Why? Then you knew she was a cabaret dancer in Dawson? No, just a minute, I Bill. should have told you, Bill. I knew I should. But I was afraid... So you admit it, Betty? Yes, of course. But, Bill... Well, I was afraid you you wouldn't understand. Preston, I thought you were my friend. What if she was a dancer? What if she was? What do you think the people of this town will say when they learn their children are in the hands of a cabaret dancer? When did you learn this and from whom? That's none of your business. To think I was going to make her a mother to my own son. A cabaret dancer. Bill, please. Give me that ring. Hold on there, Bill. Let go of me, Preston. You're acting like a fool. Now tell me who told you about Betty. It's none of your business. Let go of me. Answer my question, Bill Chandler, before I knock some sense into your head. Oh, no, don't hit him, Sergeant. Tell me, Bill. All right, all right. I'll tell you who told me. Just let go of me. All right. Let's hear it. Meanwhile, Big Frank Canute and Joe LaRue had taken Bill Chandler at his word. Hurrying out of town, they had spoken to no one they passed. And now, deep in the timber north of town, Frank paused to listen to the wind that sighed through the giant fir and pine. He wet his forefinger with his tongue and then held it aloft. What's the idea, Big Frank? I was just thinking. About what? How I could get square with Chandler. <laughs> And the wind's just right for it, too. Hmm. You mean uh, you're going to fire us, Timber? Why not? Nobody can prove we've done it. <laughs> well, if you're going to fire it, why don't you burn it all? If you start it here, it'll burn to the river's edge and go out. Now, if we go west of here, but a Ah, never mind. Right here is good enough. It'll sweep over his mill. Yeah. It'll burn the mill, Then but... I think he'll be ready to talk business about the rest of his stand. Even with me. Now, start busting off some of them pine boughs. We light them and drag them over these dry needles on the ground. Uh, well, they'll burn like powder. Then goodbye, sawmill. When young Timmy Chandler reached the mill, he found it deserted. And with King trotting at his side, he started back the way he had come. They had gone but a short distance when the great dog King stopped in his tracks and lifted his sensitive nose to the wind. <laughs> What's the matter, King? Come on, boy, we've got to find Dan. Say, King, do you smell what I do? I smell smoke. Golly, we'd better run, King. Come on. As they broke into a run, King kept close to Timmy's side. A few seconds later, he swung his huge body in front of the boy, stopping him abruptly, and the bristles rose down the great dog's back. What's the matter, King? <coughs> smoke, it's getting thick. Look, King. Those two men, they're spreading fire. King had seen the men before the boy spoke. To him, there was something familiar about them, something he didn't like. Then he remembered that day, months earlier, when the big man had been rough with Betty Owen, had argued with his master, Sergeant Preston. Preston had prevented King from attacking the man that day, and now King hesitated, wondering what his master would do in this circumstance. Then he heard Timmy say, Get him, King! Get him, boy! It was the command King wanted to hear, even if it came from this boy. He shot forward like an arrow from a bow. Big Frank Canute was caught completely off guard when 90 pounds of furred fury struck him. No! The burning branch he held in his hand went flying through the air as he was bowled over. He struggled to keep the gnashing fangs from getting at his throat. Get him off of me! Get him away! Get away, dog! Get away! King saw the other man rushing at him, a flaming torch in his hand. Time after time, the burning branch came down upon him, and instinctively he turned upon his attacker. This time, Joe LaRue screamed for help. Shoot him! Shoot him, right! Hold still! Shoot this dog! No! Joe! Joe! You... You shot me, Frank. Joe, no. No, Joe. Come on, we gotta get away from here. <coughs> Joe! Joe! He's dead. <coughs> I killed him. When the gun barked, King had jumped aside. Joe. The burning branches which had been knocked aside were spreading the fire back and around him. 
but he stood poised for the next move of the big man. He saw him bend over the prostrate form on the ground. He saw the revolver still in the outstretched hand. Quickly he lunged. The king gripped Big Frank's wrist in his steel-like jaws until he saw the gun drop. Then the dog let go. Get away! Help! Help! The king saw the big man struggle to his feet, clawed his eyes to clear the smoke, and then run screaming. As he disappeared in the dense smoke, King heard another voice. In his fury, King had forgotten the boy. His own eyes smarting from the smoke, he bounded in the direction from which the small voice came. Meanwhile, back in town, Bill Chandler finished telling where and from whom he'd heard the story of Betty's past. Now I've told you, there's only one thing more I've got to say. And what's that, Bill? No cabaret dancer will ever be a mother to my son. Bill, for two cents, No, I'd... Sergeant. I understand. Here, Bill. Here is your drink. What's that? Where? Let's see what it is. Uh, as far as I'm concerned right now, the whole world can burn. Bill, it's a timber. Let it burn. I don't care. Listen, Bill Chandler, I've had enough of your nonsense. It's well enough for you to let your timber and your mill burn. But if the wind should change, this town will be wiped out. Now, come on. Well, what do you want me to do about it? We've got to get the men organized. Be ready to start felling trees if the fire turns this way. Come on. As the two men rushed out of the cottage, Betty Owen bent over the table, her head in her arms, and wept bitterly. To her, her world had already burned, consuming everything that she cherished. The new life, the one man she had ever loved, and little Timmy. The thought of Timmy brought her erect with a start. Little, little Timmy. Timmy. Timmy! Oh, Timmy! She paused at the doorway. Great clouds of smoke were sweeping over the forest to the north, and flecks of blue and yellow flame jumped from tree to tree. She broke into a run. Timmy! 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 When Sergeant Preston and Bill Chandler reached the main street of the village, they found the men, most of them woodsmen, already organizing to fight the fire in the event it turned toward the town. Sergeant Preston directed them to take up strategic positions. Then suddenly he felt his blood run cold. He turned toward Bill Chandler. Bill! Did Timmy find you? Timmy? No, I haven't seen him. Why? He and King went to get you when I arrived. Where did they go? To the mill. The mill? That... Why, what, why didn't you tell me this before? This why? is no time to fight, Bill. But my boy, my boy. Preston, if anything happens to Thank Timmy... Thank God he's with King. If it's possible to save him, King will do it. But we've got to make sure. What can we do? King will head for water. He knows where the river is. The fire's sweeping that way. Bill, we've got to get to a boat. My boat's at the landing. Come on. We've got to get to the mill. King will go there if he can. Spy the river. Hurry! With Bill Chandler's boat, they found King and little Timmy just where Sergeant Preston had hoped they would. Both were huddled under the shelter of the muddy bank. And though the smoke was so thick they could not be seen at first, it was King's bark that had led Sergeant Preston and Bill Chandler to them. Timmy! Timmy, my boy! My boy! Don't cry, Daddy. King and I are all right now. Suddenly, the great dog King stopped his joyous barking. The finely chiseled ears snapped to alert attention and he bounded from the boat to the bank where he stood one foot poised. It was evident that he had heard something that the ears of those about him could not hear. Sergeant Preston called to him. What's the matter, fella? You must be here or something. No doubt of that, Timmy. Look, there he goes. He'll be burned. Come back, King. Come here. Maybe you heard the man I was telling you about. Tim means big Frank. Canute. That's possible. We've got to follow him. Yes, even if it is, Canute. You stay here, Timmy. Don't get out of the boat. I'll be safe, Dad. Don't worry. Hurry, Bill. Come on, find them. I can still hear King. With strength and courage born of desperation, Betty had pushed on through the choking, blinding smoke in search of Timmy. Timmy! She struggled, fought her way ahead, then fell from sheer exhaustion. She regained her feet and went on for a few steps, then fell again. This time, she hadn't the strength to rise. Timmy! She kept trying to call through her chokes and sobs. Timmy! Oh, Timmy! I, I can hear the dog. Timmy, Timmy must be with King. I, if, if I could only see, I... Here, King! Here I am, King! Where's Timmy King? Timmy! Timmy! Timmy. I can hear him, Sergeant! Timmy! See him. There he is, Bill. I see him. Here we are, fella. Who have you there? It must be Canute. No, it's a woman. Help me lift her, Bill. Sure. <coughs> I can hardly see. 
Timmy. Well, it's Betty. Timmy. Uh, Betty. <laughs> you were honey for Timmy. Uh, where's Timmy? <clears throat> Timmy's safe, Betty. He's at the river. Oh. Oh. Oh, she's fainted. Hurry, Bill. We've got to get her out of here. Let's go. Lead the way, King. Come on, Bill. Back to the river. Night had fallen, and the odor of pine smoke permeated the air, even in the neat cottage of Betty Owen. She lay wrapped in warm blankets, and there was a smile on her face, a smile of happiness. Bill Chandler sat beside her bed, and she did not draw her hand away when he reached out and took it in his own. Can you ever forgive me for what I did and said today, Betty? Of course, Bill. I understand. I sure feel like a heel. To me, Bill... You're still the best man in the world. You always will be. I'm glad you think so, Betty. And everything's to be just like it was before... before I lost my head. Yes. Just like nothing ever happened at all. I've still got you, but... But what, Bill? I guess I've lost Preston as a friend. After what I said to him, he'll never have anything to do with me again. Sure, he understands. May we come in? <laughs> of course you can. The fire's out. It burned to the river and stopped. Yes, the timber burned to the river. But your mill's gone, Bill. It couldn't be helped, Sergeant. I need a bigger mill anyway. In fact, there's a new one on its way. Bill ordered it a month ago. That's right. By the way, did they find Big Frank Canute? Yes, Bill. He must have become blinded by smoke and lost his way. They found his body not far from that of Joe LaRue. Horrible. And a strange thing. LaRue had been shot through the heart. I don't understand it. I'll bet King knows what happened to him. He's only trying to tell you, that's all. You know, I believe Timmy's right. Thanks to King, you're alive, Timmy. And and you too, Mother. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Timmy, she's not your mother yet. But she's going to be. You told me so, Dad. I guess that settles it, doesn't it, Bill? Uh, thanks to King, it does. <laughs> Yes, King, old boy. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Fellas and girls, get a move on. Shake a leg. Hurry to your grocer. Ask for special new model farm packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Remember, there are eight different new packages. And you get as many as six different exciting models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals on a single package. There's no waiting, no extra cost. So get a move on. Get in on the fun. Start building yourself a swell model farm without delay. Remember, 46 keen detailed scale models are yours. Get them now at your grocer's. They're yours for the asking when you ask for delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gum. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Dawson Fire. The night that the great fire swept Dawson, it leveled half the business district. Only one man was killed, but there were others of us who would have died if it hadn't been for King. It was just about the most exciting and terrifying evening the boomtown of Dawson ever experienced. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. So long.